I want to provide an introduction to a portfolio performance measure known as the information ratio. So what this does is it measures portfolio performance by looking at the ratio of excess return to risk. And it's similar to the Sharpe ratio, which you may be familiar with. The Sharpe ratio was um, derived by William F. Sharp, probably more famous for um, being one of the creators of the capital asset pricing model. And what he did was he looked at the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate, that's the excess return, and he divided it by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So that's the measure of risk there. The information ratio goes a step further. If you think about it, a portfolio manager managing a a portfolio of stocks really ought to beat the risk-free rate. So that's maybe not a great benchmark. So perhaps a better benchmark is this information ratio where we take the expected return of the portfolio and we subtract out the expected return of some benchmark. What is that benchmark? It could be the S&P 500. If it happens to be a sector fund that focuses on healthcare, then it might be some index of healthcare stocks. And we're going to divide it by a measure of risk we call tracking error. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. Okay, so again, the difference is as Sharp looks at the excess, um, at the return in excess of the risk free rate, where the information ratio looks at the return in excess of some benchmark. And lots of times we use the S&P 500, but as I said, you may want to focus on a different benchmark depending on um, the objectives of the fund you're analyzing. So for tracking error, we use the standard deviation of the portfolio returns minus the benchmark. So we don't use the portfolio um, return standard deviation. We look at it, uh, the returns and how it's done relative to the benchmark. Of course, in both cases, a higher ratio it means better performance, um, and we should keep in mind that if we see a negative ratio, not only is the fund not doing particularly well, it's not even beating its benchmark. So in the case of the information ratio, it's not beating the benchmark, whatever that is, and in the case of the Sharpe ratio, it's not even beating the risk-free rate. So while I've talked about portfolio performance in a previous video, um, I did not show you how to calculate it, and I want to show you how to do that in Excel. So here I have some data, and I've done some, some manipulation. So I have here some portfolio returns. So you can go to Yahoo Finance, for example, and look up the price data for some mutual fund you're interested in, and then you can convert them into returns. Okay, I've already done that here. You can also look up the returns for some index like the S&P 500 and you get the prices and then you can convert those into returns as well. All right, I'm going to assume that the risk-free rate is 0.25%. And I've also computed here um, the holding period return. That's simply one plus the portfolio's return. The reason I did that is I'd like to be able to calculate the um, annual portfolio return. And I've done that right here. So I don't want to just sort of add these up, divide by 12, and then multiply by 12, because that would be an average of, of um, 12 months returns. I want to assume compounding here. So what have I done here? Okay, Up here, I don't know how well you can see that, I've used the geometric mean function, which is going to do the calculation of raising this to the um, to the one twelfth power since we have twelve observations. So I don't know how well you can see it up here, but the function is G E O M E A N, and I've had it do the geometric mean of this through this. So all of these observations, observations. So G nineteen colon G thirty. So that'll multiply each one of these together. And then it's what it's going to do is it's going to raise it to the 1 power. So you're going to get an average 
holding period returned, and I want to raise it to the 12th power, right? Because let's say the average return is 1%, then 1.01 raised to the 12th power would give us an annual return, and then, or would give us 1 plus the annual return, and then we want to subtract 1 from it. So if you do that, you get 15.4% is the um, expected return for this portfolio. So let me calculate these two measures of portfolio performance. So I put the formulas right here so that we don't have to go back to the slides to reference them. So let's do the Sharp Ratio first. So the Sharp Ratio is the um, excess return over the risk-free rate. So here I have a column where I've taken the return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate, so D19 minus F19, and I've just copied this down um, the column. And I want to divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio returns, and I've actually already done that here. I've used the stdev.s function, which calculates the sample standard deviation. So when you use standard deviation, you type in stdev, you'll see several that will pop up. One will be .p, that's the population standard deviation. Okay, This is not a population, this is a, this is a sample. So the real difference, the difference is, is that the, the sample standard deviation divides by n minus 1, the population standard deviation divides by n. If you have enough observations, you're not going to get that different an answer, but the, there's not a lot of observations here. So I get 3.52%. So if I want to calculate the um, Sharpe ratio, what do I want to do? I want to take the average of these returns. I want to divide it by the standard deviation and then I want to annualize it by multiplying by the square root of 12. So let me see if I can do that. Let's see. Equals 12. So I'm going to take again the average returns here or average excess returns equals average H19 to H30 divided by um, the standard deviation which is in D31 and hopefully I've done that right I get 0.990183 as the sharp ratio. For the information ratio, I want to do the same thing, but I need to find the standard deviation of this. This this is the tracking error, right? The difference between the returns on the portfolio and the risk-free rate. So let me do that. S T D E and you'll notice down here they give you several, right? Dot P, dot S. Um, one with nothing. If you use the one that doesn't have anything here, that also gives you the sample standard deviation. But I'll put in dot s just so we know. And again, it's i19 to i30. So I have my tracking error of 2.95% here. So again, the information ratio is just going to be the average of these returns divided by this tracking error. And again, we're going to multiply by the square root of 12 to annualize this. So let's see. So I want the average of I19 to I30 divided by what's in I31. So let's see what we get there. We get negative 0.8763. So as I pointed out before, if you get a negative number, not only is this um, firm not doing well, it's not even beating the benchmark, right? So any, any other uh, mutual fund that beats the benchmark, if you're using the same benchmark, is going to be better than this. This is not even beating the S&P. So 
if this is the S&P, you can certainly make an argument that you should be putting your money into an index fund instead of giving this portfolio portfolio manager um, money to manage a fund that's not even beating the S&P 500. So again, pretty easy to do in Excel. You can collect the data off of um, Yahoo Finance and you can do these calculations. You know, you could certainly use a lot more data than 12 months would probably make it more interesting, but you know, certainly quite easy to do.